Jennifer Lawrence, the fascinating subversion of Hollywood's sweetheart. Lawrence tests her star quality once more with Red Sparrow, the most recent unconventional move for an actor flirtation with public perception. The a lot of extravagantly far-famed Europe, the less extravagantly moot you've got to be to urge the net peeved and divided over you regardless, thus proves Jennifer Lawrence's laundry list of apparent provocations over the last period of time, with untoward acres of tweetage given over to the actual fact that she a wore a dress outdoors beat phantom thread. These were miniature tinderbox buses, of course, just priming the outrage machine for the firestorm of the emotional Red Sparrow, an icy spy adventure story fueled by extreme sexual violence that will have appeared laboratory tool to come up with as several agitated print media hot takes as attainable although it hadn't been discharged into the long, state change winter of hashtag medu, five years past, she clumsily tripped over her puffy pink blue blood robe whereas acceptive an Academy Award for a zippy indie rom-com, and audiences watched with experience explosive hearts in their eyes. What an extended time five years is. It's particularly long once you're in your 20s. Lawrence was 22 then and is 27 currently, and anyone with even a passing memory of that formative decade in their lives is aware of what a night and day divide lies between those ages, it's simply tougher to dissect for a film star United Nations agency lives on a daily basis of that transition below a camera's scrutiny. Let's not get into leering tabloid language here, Lawrence is as all adult of currently, removal flesh and enduring all manner of sadistic patricentric penalization as a Bolshoi dancers turned Russian intelligence agent, as she was once she nobly volunteered as tribute for the Hunger Games series, however the actress's screen image, underpinned since her 2010 breakthrough in Winter's Bone by a sort of flinty, no bullshit resilience, has undergone a refined shift within the interim. The flintiness remains, however thus features a degree of cool reserve and sexualized confidence, a hard-won realization, perhaps, that the earthy, dorky every-girl persona wins you a lot of fans than it will privacy. That's all o current screen in Red Sparrow, at the side of any quantity of queasily fulgurous bodily exposure and abuse. In her strong arm education as a detective, Lawrence's character Dominika Igorova is schooled to use her body as her primary fact-finding resource. Once ensnaring a suspect politician by subjecting herself to rape, she's deemed fitly qualified for the Red Sparrow Academy, poor school, as Dominika dismissively calls it, wherever an elite choice of completely enticing aspiring spies are trained within the art of submissive sexual manipulation by no but a nipple-fiddling Charlotte Rampling herself. As sex is power schemes go, this is often neither significantly horny nor particularly empowering. Red Sparrow is instead a school of thought story of connection, a system of feminine exploitation that won't allow you to beat it, and doing all of your best to come back out alive. It's a story that, for higher or worse, feels grimly tuned into Hollywood's current crisis of gender politics, and Lawrence, her slip-sliding raw shun accent with all, sells the unseasonably frosty hell out of it, whether or not bloodily thrashing unsuspecting victims in a very room or golf shot her body out as bait within the most complicatedly designed garment cinema has nevertheless seen, she's stoically absorbing to observe, an actor herself absolutely educated within the power of her physical presence. It's no surprise that critics are divided over the question of simply however complicit Red Sparrow is within the grotesque system of sexual subjugation it depicts. More fascinated by women's bodies than in their experiences, Scott Slate's Inku Kong of the Off the Mark film, whereas Uproxx's Amy Nicholson defended what she saw because the film's virtuously aware perversity, it refuses to allow us to leer at Jennifer Lawrence's long legs while not a jab of shame. Another sidebar of criticism queries Lawrence's terribly autonomy in creating the film to start with positing the actor as a sort of doll being bent into compromising positions by her male business superiors. It's exhausting to not suppose she is losing some battles here, speculated dessert Apple Dean for GQ casting doubt on Lawrence's perennial assertions in interviews that she selected to do, to try to do, to try and do, the film as an act of self-empowerment, claiming management over her body and its exposure once a much publicized leak of personal nudes in 2014 left her feeling profaned and helpless. This is tough territory, there's a line between questioning an artist's judgment and distrustful their artistic agency, and it's one crossed much more usually with reference to ladies than to men. Has the sleek tad of Red Sparrow backfired on Lawrence's feminist motivation for creating it? 
You may argue the purpose either manner, however it appears unhelpful to deny her full credit for consciously taking the chance to start with, even as she did with last year's sharply polarizing mother, her ex-boyfriend Darren Aronofsky's borrowfully metaphoric study of girls cyclically tortured by the male artistic ego. It's funny that she recently, contentiously admitted to solely creating it through three minutes of Paul Thomas Anderson's crooked fashion world romance phantom thread, It's Much Mother. S. Better Behaved Twin. Mother. Is that the gutsiest film she's nevertheless created, and yielded probably her most finely shaded performance to date, nevertheless a number of the film's most virulent detractors delineate Lawrence as its victim, conflating the young actor with the savagely exploited ingenue she presciently compete in it. This kind of criticism extended to last week's absurd media brouhaha over Lawrence's call to wear a bare-shouldered, cut to their Versace robe for a minute's long outside photo call within the London Gregorian calendar month chill, the distinction between her apparel and her male co-star's cozier winter garb prompting a spate of angry comment against the implanted Hollywood favoritism that will force her to decorate this manner, she selected the dress, she liked the dress, and if she wished to be cold to seem hot that was entirely her perquisite. Between the lines, you may browse an equivalently insubordinate defense of her call to create the equally skin-bearing film she was promoting, although Lawrence herself would most likely roll her eyes at the terribly words between the lines, at this time, she'd most likely just like the courtesy of being taken at her word. Thanks. If you wish this video then, do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share.